Uh, thank you, Chairman Miller. This committee plays a key role in shaping policies that impact the quality of life for all Americans of all ages, of all incomes, and yes, of either gender. I'm grateful to have four of these Americans with us today ready to provide their testimony on the second panel as they give us their input on the state of our consistently growing economy and its impact on men and women alike. I'd also like to extend a special welcome to Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro and Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton for joining us today. Mr. Chairman, a few months ago when we convened our first hearing on the middle class and our nation's economy, I told our colleagues that I've never been one to engage in class warfare and I wasn't about to start for the purposes of that hearing. I've always found that while pitting one group against another often makes for good politics, it rarely makes for good policy. I believe the same can be said for the issue before us today. This is an issue that can become very emotionally charged, and if we aren't careful, if we let that occur, we can do significant damage in many ways. We could inadvertently punish one group of workers while purportedly attempting to help another. Our efforts could lead to unnecessary and frivolous litigation that could place excessive burdens on employers and employees alike. Or we may simply lead ourselves toward federal policy that could be viewed as too heavy-handed or intrusive into the lives of working men and women. In short, before we approach this issue, we should look to the time-honored mantra that guides, or at least should guide, so much of our work here in Washington, do no harm. Through the Equal Pay Act, which amended the Fair Labor Standards Act and the Civil Rights Act, federal law currently prohibits an employer from paying an employee different wages or otherwise discriminating in any term or condition of employment on the basis of gender. Does that mean that there is no sexism or any other set of circumstances that can place men and women on anything other than a level footing in a given workplace? Certainly not. However, the fact is, under current law, there are remedies for violations that show clear gender discrimination. Under the Equal Pay Act, for example, the person found having been discriminated against can obtain back pay for any wages unlawfully withheld as a result of pay inequality and twice that amount for a willful violation. And violations of the Civil Rights Act allow for jury trials and punitive damages for victims of intentional sex discrimination included in wage-related cases. I look forward to hearing from all our witnesses today about how these laws currently are being applied to modern-day cases of wage inequality. I'll also look forward to hearing from our witnesses about the disparate views among experts on the scope of this potential problem. Congresswoman DeLauro, data you cite shows that women earn 80 cents on the dollar to men. At points, the American Academy of University Women Educational Foundation cites the number at 95 cents on the dollar when controlling for other factors. A witness on our second panel looks at the raw 2006 data and cites 88 cents on the dollar among full-time workers and notes other studies that show that the closer you look at the numbers, the more it narrows to nearly a statistically insignificant comparison. In short, the facts with regard to this matter are all over the map, and I'm pleased we'll have a chance to take a closer look at the reasons why during our time together this morning. It goes without saying that no one in this room approves of discrimination in any form, including discrimination based on gender. As a civilized society, we simply should not tolerate it. I have three daughters and three sons. I, I don't dare discriminate. And um, we now have more grandsons than granddaughters, but it's very close. And it used to be a lot more granddaughters than grandsons. So I don't know how that all works out. But uh, if you go to 35, I think it will start to even out. He's at 27 now. 28. 28. And one coming. So it's, it's very close. At the same time, I cannot help but think back to that simple phrase of do no harm. As we near, hear from our witnesses today and as we consider significant and substantial changes to federal law, I hope we keep in mind and recognize the very clear, very strong anti-gender discrimination laws we already have on the books. Once again, thank you, Mr. Chairman.